Welcome here to Talking HCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. Big, big video coming up for you today because we are going to be discussing once again another storm on social media surrounding Barcelona. I always say it but never ever a dull day when it comes to the soap opera that's Barcelona because today we're going to be talking about Eris Sarabia, Kike Setien's assistant coach. We're going to be talking about exactly what he said on the sidelines during El Clasico on the weekend and why those words do appear to have upset the current Barcelona team, and if that's true, why that's a massive, massive problem, and actually confirms what we already knew about these players. It's all coming up, believe me, we are going into it with the full story. Because if we start here with a bit of background information on Edith Sarabia, I have spoken about him before in previous videos, but if you have missed that, basically he was brought in as part of Kike Setien's backroom staff. The two have worked together now for a long, long time. They've had a lot of success together. And basically, Edith Sarabia is all about the intensity. He's there as part of Kike Setien's staff to really give the players that extra bit of motivation, that extra bit of intensity and edge to their game. Kike Setien is the man who thinks tactically. Kike Setien there is the man that really sets out the game plan and is the thinker behind the operation. And Edis Sarabia, he's the man there. He's the talker. And you can always see him on the sidelines. We've seen it right throughout the season so far. He's very, very vocal. He tells the players where to be, gives them encouragement. He gives them words there of confidence, but also, of course, words of criticism along the way. And certainly Sarabia, for me, when he came in, I thought this guy is exactly what we need. Because at Barcelona, I think we've all been crying out for somebody to come in and actually say, look, to the players, this is what we need to be doing, and you're not doing it right. You need to do better. However, that's not exactly gone to plan, because following El Clasico, the defeat of course to Real Madrid on Sunday, Sarabia has come under fire on social media after visuals have emerged from movie star their show Vamos. And this is not the first time they've done this. They do try and lip read a lot of coaches, a lot of players to sort of get extra footage behind the scenes to take you closer to the action. And they basically picked up Sarabia saying a number of things throughout El Clasico that was basically not great. And what I mean by that is, Sarabia wasn't exactly complimentary about the way that Barcelona were playing. But we weren't playing well. So at the same time, what's wrong with that? And I just want to talk you through exactly here what was said, the translation into English about exactly what Sarabia was saying. And then I want to explain to you why this for me is nothing but normal coming from a coach. And there was a part in the game there starting off, he was basically talking about our build-up play, about our passing. He was saying there, that's not a pass that should be going to Sergio Busquets. That pass there should be going straight to one of the interiors, either De Jong or Arthur. Don't play it there, straight into Busquets. Busquets, who's there clearly, not happy with the way that Barcelona were building up from the back. One of the big moments indeed, of course, in the first half, the big, big decisive moments. It was Jordi Alba's cut back, Antoine Griezmann arriving, he puts his effort over the bar, and Sarabia very, very unhappy after that miss. He said, stick it in, Antoine. He swore. He said, come on, come on, you've got to hit the target there. And clearly, very, very frustrated that Griezmann didn't hit the target, didn't put Barcelona ahead, and as the game went on, we did go on to see that was a real really, really critical moment. He was also there picked up criticising other players. They don't seem to know exactly who was at fault in this particular instance because he was then caught saying he doesn't do anything that he has to do. And then suddenly he wants to play and he wants to shoot when he has to play the ball. And again, he swore. So clearly there, Sarabia, very, very unhappy in moments of that game that they picked out there from a 90 minute match. Obviously, there are going to be some moments that things aren't going well. And he was basically there, finished the video. He was talking to Setien saying we can't have the defensive line so pinned back because then they stretch us and Benzema comes and Real Madrid press. We must reduce the space. We must try and get higher. And that's what we should have been doing in the second half. And all this tells me is those Barcelona players still are not quite taking on board and they're not quite executing what Kike Setien and his staff want them to do. Because clearly against Real Madrid, there was frustration. You look at that Griezmann chance. I think we were all very, very angry when Griezmann missed. We were no different to Ede Sarabia. And also at the same time, that's his job. He's there to get the best out of those players. He's there to tell them what they should be doing. However, after this has all come out, according to Cope in the Spanish media, now we don't know if this is true, we don't know for sure whether this is how the group feels, but they are reporting that the dressing room are upset with the words of Sarabia. They believe that he's not the most appropriate person to lead the team from the bench, and they're not happy with the footage that has emerged. And if that is true, genuinely, 
I am losing faith not only in Barcelona, but modern football in general. What is it coming to? What do they want? Do they want to be there wrapped in cotton wool? Do you want them to say at every moment in the game, oh, you're doing well, everything is fine. Yeah, we're losing the Classic we may well lose the league, but you know what? You're doing okay. You carry on doing that. No, that's not what football is about. If that's what it was about, nobody would ever get better. Nobody would learn new things. Nobody would take on new instructions. You've got to be pushed. And certainly all week long, they would have been working very specifically on tactics. They would have been working there on a clear game plan and when your players go out there and they're not doing what you've worked on all week and then it makes you look bad of course you're going to be angry when Griezmann misses there Sarabia is probably thinking yeah if we lose this game now it's going to come back on me it's going to come back on Kike we're going to look bad and Griezmann could have stuck away that chance and everything would have been better clearly there his job as the assistant coach his job there as the talker of Kike Setien's staff he's got to demand that from the players and there's nothing wrong with that that is literally his his job and if the players can't accept that what are they doing you're talking here about players who are earning millions who are earning massive massive money if they can't take there a little bit of criticism for everything this club is giving them what are they doing what are they doing and like I say this may or may not be true in many cases I would actually say you know what the Spanish media naturally unreliable I wouldn't listen to this it's not true our players wouldn't do that but you know what I think deep down we all think they might. They might actually have that attitude because that's why they like Valverde. They were all very, very quick to back Valverde, who never really got on their back. He never really told them when they were doing things wrong. He wouldn't really shout at them. He wouldn't bring them in for training straight after defeats. They'd be given that time off. And that's why they all enjoyed it because they were all there in their comfort zone. We've all heard about the phrase Club de Amigos, the club of friends. That's exactly what Barcelona has been for far, far too long. And I, for one, I'm happy about Sarabia. I I'm happy there's somebody is man enough to go into that dressing room and say, you know what? You might be superstars. You might be world-class players. You have won everything in the game. But still, if something's not right, I'm going to tell you because I have that authority. And as the coach and as the assistant coach, they have the right to tell the players if they're not doing things correctly, if they're not taking on their instructions, believe me, they're well within their rights to say it. And for me, they did nothing wrong. And what I would also say about this entire situation, guys, is don't just look here at Barcelona. Why not look wider afield? Why don't you think here about the best teams in the world and then think about the coaches who are actually leading those teams? Think about, I don't know, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool. Think about Pep Guardiola and Manchester City. You think about those coaches there on the touchline and how they react towards their own players. You can guarantee that if Liverpool and if players of Liverpool, players of Manchester City are not doing what they should be doing, they're going to get it from Jurgen Klopp, they're going to get it from Pep Guardiola, they're going to be screaming at them to do what you've been told and to get them there back in the right shape, back in the right state of mind. Certainly, they're not going to hold back. So why should Barcelona be any different? I think at this club right now, we have actually lost the feeling of who's in charge here. The players do not run the club. The players do not pick the team. The players don't decide how they want to play. We are paying them to go out on the field and perform well. We're not paying them to make all of the decisions. That's why we have a coach. That's why we have a coaching team. And I think that here needs to be brought well back into reality. And just on Pep Guardiola, a lot of people saying here, yeah, Edis Arabia was getting on the players back. Edis Arabia was criticising the players. How many times have you seen Pep Guardiola, the best manager in the world, how many times have you seen his team win? And actually, as his players are coming off the field, he'll actually go up to one or two of them and actually be berating them. Even after they've won, he'll be in their face saying, look, we may have won, but you could have done this better. You could have done this better. You could have done this. Are those players angry? Are they upset? No. They're glad they've got somebody there in their face telling them how to improve. That's what football is all about. Currently, though, we've got too many players at this club who are happy just to stay the same, just to keep on doing the same things year in, year out, far too comfortable, not interested now in improving, going to a new level or doing anything new. They just want to keep doing things the same. But I say to Sarabia and I say to Setien, you keep on going. You try and fight for change because believe me, I think we're all behind them on this. We know we need change. And of course, guys, I am very, very interested indeed to hear your thoughts on this particular subject. What do you think there of Sarabia's words? And what do you think there of the backlash potentially from the Barcelona squad in reaction to what he said? Let me know 
all of those thoughts in the comments down below. I really want to know what you're thinking. And of course, there'll be plenty more coming up, believe me. But until next time, as always, Visca El Barca.